Good evening there, and I am Lemon Jai. Thank you very much. Today on the show, the news review, the 21st of no December 2021. Lawyers for President Adam Barrow have filed a new motion seeking the Supreme Court to dismiss UDP's petition. We also have vendors speaking on the high cost of commodities there. That's food commodities. Also, businessman Abu Bakari Jawara donates five motorcycles to fishermen. My guest today will be Law Lower Body MP. Al Haji Jawara. He promised that he was going to deliver state house, well, his constituency, that is Lower to President Adam Barrow. And the president has won that constituency in the just past presidential election. He will be my guest for today. Before we get into the show proper, uh, we will look at the newspapers and see what they are reporting on this uh, on today, beginning with the standard newspaper, APRC rival faction reports. Koli Yaya Tamba, the leader of the rival APRC faction, loyal to former President Yaya Jame, has said that he totally disagrees with Yankuba Koli, a senior member of the faction loyal to Fabakari Tombong Jata, which backed President Adam Barrow uh, uh, and the NPP. Mr. Koli had or had claimed that the FTJ-led faction helped achieve Barrow's victory in the December 4th election. Responding to Koli, Yaya Tamba, whose faction allied with Mamakande's GDC in the last election, said Yankuba and his colleagues do not even have anything to boast of because the majority of the genuine APRC followers are not with them. UDP diaspora speaks on election aftermath. The diaspora chapters of the opposition UDP yesterday issued a statement expressing its support of the leadership's decision to challenge the veracity and accuracy of the results of the 4th December presidential election. The UDP lodged a petition at the Supreme Court seeking for the court to invalidate the results of the election due to fraud, corrupt practice, and voter inducement. In their statement, the diasporan UDP members said they recognized that these are challenging moments for the party and its principles which are being tested by the incumbent government to instill fear in the minds of Gambians by the use of unprovoked and illegal violence on supporters of the UDP. That's UDP diaspora members speaking there. Borough amazed by man who trekked 480 kilometers to meet him. President Adam Borough has returned gratitude to one Musa Trawale who trekked 480 kilometers to congratulate him on his victory saying if his civil servants and ministers demonstrate Musa's commitment, the Gambia will be like Dubai in four years. So well, let's see the point in newspaper elsewhere. Consumers ask government to tackle high fish prices. Several fish vendors and buyers, buyers at the secondary market in the KM, that's Carnifee municipality, have called on the borough-led government to immediately tackle the high cost of fish in the country. Um, yes, that will be that for the news for us. Stay tuned. Receive your money transfer at any of our branches across the country with ease, including our new branches in Bajakunda, Jaring, Same, and Sandu Daslame. No long queues, no hassle with Easy Financial Services. Get more for your money. You can also send money anywhere in the world with Easy Financial Services. We also do foreign currency exchange, bank deposit, Ecobank Express Point, bill payments, and many more. For more information, contact us on plus 220-700-0819 or visit our website at www.easyfinancials.com. Dot GM. Welcome back. So, lawyers for President Adam Barrow today filed a fresh motion seeking the Supreme Court to dismiss the UDP's petition against the Gambian leader. Well, the lawyers had earlier filed a motion, uh, a similar motion seeking the Supreme Court, that is the top court there, to dismiss the UDP's petition there. But today, they filed a fresh motion which is more extensive. Um, and then the Supreme Court, uh, they withdrew the uh, earlier motion, uh, which attracted some cost. The Supreme Court charged them $10,000 for, for, for that. Uh, more in this story by Mati Senghor. Lawyers of President Adam Barrow have filed a fresh motion asking the Supreme Court to dismiss UDP's petition against the President. UDP initiated a lawsuit against President Barrow over the December 4th presidential election, accusing the President and his National People's Party of bribing voters. On Tuesday, 21st December, President Barrow's legal team withdrew their motion filed earlier seeking the Supreme Court to dismiss the petition filed by the United Democratic Party on grounds that a sitting president is immune from legal action. The defendant's withdrawal came from a fresh motion. The earlier motion had only one prayer, which was the dismissal of the petition whilst the new motion is more elaborate with eight prayers. The new motion, Sheriff M. Tambi, the lawyer for the first correspondent, said he only seeks to consolidate the other motion that had been filed earlier. 
Chief Justice Hassan B. Jalo granted the application and ordered the defendant to pay a cost of $10,000 to the petitioner UDP. The petitioner UDP was represented by lawyer Bori Asture, lawyer Abdul Aziz Ben Suda, and lawyer Lamin El Dabo, while the first correspondent, President Baro, was represented by lawyer Sharif Mari Tambidu, lawyer Christopher E. Mene, lawyer Pauline Bakurin, and lawyer Ida Richard. And the second correspondent, IEC, was represented by lawyer Keba Sanyang and lawyer Malik H.B. Jalo. The matter stands adjourned to Friday, 24th December. 2021. TFN is review, Mati Senghor. Now, these days, uh, Ghanaians, citizens have been complaining a lot in terms of the price of food commodities in the country. Everywhere you go to, people are complaining that the prices are increasing. Well, our reporter was at the secondary market to check. Recently, there has been hike in the prices of commodities, which has led to traders and buyers complaining. The Fatu Network visited the famous Serakunda market to sound the views of traders and buyers on the set increase in prices and how it is affecting them. South Sela Binta calls on government to take the necessary steps in preventing further increase in the prices of commodities, especially cooking condiments. Price will never over high, sir. Time be bagasi yep nyungu yoka. Sako hora mam first time na makodon jende one hundred and ten dollars. Like one hundred and seventy five lengo de jai. Nini ne kadi try dende so na torp because bagas bola che mungi ser. Mungo over ser sa so na ne torp wah dege yal. Ngur bisu nyumu ne dimbala si lolo. Kom mudimbala nyusi pricey bagasi gai wanyiko. A buyer being the samba says the continuous rise of prices has devalued the Gambian currency. Stating that before now, five hundred dollars could get someone enough foodstuffs. Masi bangi me tu sunyun dige ni. Nyun so na nende wah dige yala. Ah, nyun ge wa pse dambi de bufeke ne muna dimbale dige ni. Price bita muna wanya ko tax bita su wanya ko henya price bari tamdi na wanya ko. Fi hola bala Ellison bijot ak Ellison bijot dige ni nyun so ne fisi masi bi. Price si defa itorap ni den so na. Te so yo bonte five hundred time bo bunu five hundred. Dangan duga duga bo bari balige lolo amatul dige. Hale yangu sana school bi munta dem, masi bi problem. Nyunta nyuko ni pumuzi malenyu, si masi bi ni ni chuo na bunifu chuo na tamu dim balenyu. Hale itam muda apale lentam. Another vendor, Aisha, who sells foodstuffs, pleads with the government to help market women as they find it challenging to make a living. And this is why we call it aring, firo mantara kiano. Ni baka sosa daya wala ni awaf. Ani la kudofa ni baka boni. Kole ya kwa ubeki ni na baka tala kala fal. At the Serekunda market, one of the biggest markets here, in the center of Kanifi Municipal Council, we've heard from the vendors around here, giving us our, their opinions about the high rate commodities in the market here. They are asking and they are pleading, and the government will be sworn for next year to actually control the market price here. And they're also saying that there's free, there's not market control actually here, which, which they want something to be done about it. They are also emphasizing about women empowerment, that if women are being empowered and giving them their opportunity to unveil what is in them, then more can be done. Reporting for the Fatu Network, I am Maimunaba. Welcome back. So businessman Abu Bakari Jawara and his Gach Global Company today donated five new motorcycles to fishermen in the country. More in this report. Uh, Amada Tisanti. Mm -hmm. I, I will tell you, Conole. Mm -hmm. A mama kill, 
Olivenu gambi sara la sagalo lempo jola menta mbita sanji tam tan sabati afama nata asaita ono afama fana ya ajo menta mbita sanji mwani lulut ati bakar jawara ni haji jawara nata koto koto ni ndoko saite lebe gambi sara la sagalo to ani gambi sara la nano la sate do mandigol membeje ite leka ojo ite amira obeke la kensing ote ke la kensing ka fo atika president ngole makoy man tala ka president ngoda makoy ateka gambian ka le makoy gambian gambia la ta nyato be droit de la abakar jawara bulo be je so i jenaba on behalf of mr jawara i'm doing this presentation uh, on behalf of him and i'm very glad to make this presentation on behalf of mr jawara so that the beneficiaries can the beneficiaries can uh, benefit from it. So I want to inform you on behalf of Mr. Jawara that he is presenting this motorbike, uh, the five motorbike for you, for you guys. <laughs> Buy Parfum, the first perfume bar in Gambia. Buy Parfum, it's another way to perfume yourself. In a luxurious and attractive shop called Buy Parfum. Come and find rare and natural churai flowers. And also the fragrances of the biggest popular brands, Oud Private Collection, Air Freshener, Flora, Venus, Fresh 24, and many other products. With Buy Parfum, discover the perfume bar, a new concept in the world. Personalize your sense with the perfume bar. With the perfume bar, choose the perfume that looks like you. Buy perfume 54 Kairaba Avenue, opposite to American Embassy. You can join us on 7700025 or 5291888. Buy perfume Gambia. You will really love it. Thank you very much. So today I am joined by the MP for Lower Badibu, Honorable Alhaji Jawara. He's my guest for today. Honorable, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Njaya, for having Good, me. good, good, good. Honorable, uh, first of all, give us your, how are you feeling in terms of <laughs> the election? It has come and gone, and we have seen the president win, and you had made a vow that Lower Badibu was for the president. Yeah. And that vow have now come to pass. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Njai. I feel very happy. <coughs> I feel very happy in the sense that uh, this is what I said before. I say Loa Badibu, or Badibu in general is for Baro. But uh, many people were doubted by yeah. that. They yeah. say no. Badibu is a no-go area for Baro. Badibu is an opposition place, this and that. But I will tell them that uh, Badibu has proven us that, yes, now we say no to opposition. We are now part of the ruling party. Because for how long we have been in the opposition, but it's okay now. Now we want to be the, with the government. What What is your secret? What is to this victory that you got in Badibu? What is the secret? There is no secret in this. The government has decided. There is no secret in the only secret that I would say is we went there to sell our agenda to people. We went there to talk to people. We don't threaten nobody. We are not hostile to people. You know, we sell our manifesto and our agenda in a very peaceful manner. So people listen to us. And they see that this is the genuine party, this is the genuine leadership that we want to vote for. Did you steal the election? Did you bribe voters? <laughs> Did you induce them? This is what your rival is accusing you of, the UDP. They have, in fact, gone to court. Um, this is the same. Same in the sense that, I will tell you this today, our electoral process or system of election here, I can say is one of the free, fair, and transparent manner. Even in the United States, if you go to vote, you vote with uh, effort is electronic. Maybe people at the database can manipulate things. But Gambia is free, fair, and transparent. Because all the age party, they have their own agent there. We have our uh, electoral body, IEC. We have all the observers there. And not only that, the public is there. How can you steal? So why do you think UDP is rejecting the result? Because they are disappointed by the Gambians. They feel proud, they feel pompous, they feel that yes, they own people. They feel that whatever they say, that will happen. So they think that they have people at their disposal. And people are stoned to show them that, look, we are free like any other person. And we are free to choose our leader, the one who we are comfortable with, the one we, whom we have confidence with. And that's why they vote for Barrow. 
But how about the what they accused you of that you went and we are giving money to people cooking pots, cooking utensils, but also milling <laughs> machines, <laughs> rice milling machines. Yes, uh, Lavinja, the reason why I don't want to respond to that, but I will. For the fact that, you know, we are, we, we have a political party, a political entity, and that is NPP, National People's Party. And when we go for this political rallies campaign, people have their, their, their things that they want, and they request this from us as a political party, whether we can provide this service for them. And we give promises that, yes, we will. And not only NPP. Funnily enough, the one, the, the uh, political party that sue us to court, you understand? Yeah. They give this cooking intensives to, uh, how to call it, how many uh, Yai Kompins and women groups? We have seen even their party leader. He came out with these cooking pots and other stuffs, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why I was coming. Somebody called me and tell me that, uh, how far with the Calero petition? Yes. <laughs> someone, someone said that. <laughs> no, it's the Calero petition. Petition, yes. This, this is force of its kind that I will see this thing in Gambia. And, uh, you know, people should understand that leadership is always given by Allah. It's not about you are the person who is well landed or you have experience or you have this. No, you know, people need to understand two things knowledge and to be well landed. These are two things. Allah can look at you, Lamin, mm -hmm. and give you a knowledge yes. that nobody even expects. He can give you the knowledge to run the affairs of the state. Right. You understand? He can give me the knowledge that I'm with somebody who is well landed in this particular area. Right. So people need to differentiate this. But now I believe Allah has made His judgment. The color of petition, we are on it. Still. But but uh, it wasn't just UDP that rejected the result. You yes. have Esafal, even though he has since backpedaled on his <laughs> initial <laughs> initial position of rejecting. Yes. Uh, but also you have Mama Kande, the GDC, and Mama Kande is backed by Jamme. In 2016, Jamme was the one who rejected the poll. Now you have Mama Kande too. Yes, very uh, much involved. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, one thing is that uh, those who rejected the result, they don't expect this. Nobody expect this. Among them, mm -hmm. nobody expect this. Yes. In the sense that you know, they they just think that now and or okay, Adam Baro came into power three years to election, so I'm also known in this country. People know me. I've been in politics. I've been in this or that, so I can also come easy ride and be a president. It is not like that. People need to understand this. Yes. It is not like that. Leadership is always given by Allah. That's all. You understand? We are just there as what the Maninkas will call as Sababo. You understand? That is why we went to vote. Yes. But Allah has already decided this. Who will so be president? Who will be president and who will not be? Mm -hmm. So they should understand this. Rejecting the election is their right to reject. But did they have the power to nullify the election? No. You understand? They don't have that power. And that is why they went to court. And for me, going to court is the same for me. Because this is a, a well-cleared victory. It's a landslide victory. You understand? Mm -hmm. So going to court for what? Well, I, by, I believe personally, maybe they are just trying to please their, their supporters. So that the supporters will have something to say at the end of the game. And that's what they, they are doing. You think that is what they are doing? Of course, that's what they are doing. So um, in, terms of, um, in terms of the... the because... What does this really mean for the political future of this country? Because really, I had predicted that the president was going to win, but I didn't see that, that him winning by such huge and vast uh, and massive, when I say that, my staff will laugh, uh, <laughs> la la margin, right? What, what, what does this tell? You know, this is telling us that, you know, the average Gambians, they don't want people who are very arrogant, excuse for my language, yes. who are very hostile. Yes. People want somebody who can work for them. People want somebody who can listen to them. People want somebody whom they know that what they want, the person will do, and they will have their freedom. This is what the average Gambians are looking for. And the silence majority have taught all the political parties that, yes, this is the kind of leader that we are looking for, and now we have it. Do you think tribe played a part? Tribe, tribe played any role? Because we've seen the, this issue of, okay, even Manding Kayale, Kelekam, okay, the other tribes ganged up against the Mandinkas. No, I no, have, no, I no, have no. Let me, me, I don't believe in that notion. Let me tell you this. You know, 
uh, like a politician who did not have any political agenda or a politician who is weak by selling his agenda, the only thing that they will do is they will rally behind tribes. They will rally behind religious. They will rally behind all sorts of things. You understand? In order to sell their agenda to the people. But let me tell you, if you are talking about tribalism, you are talking about who? Adam Baro is the same tribe with Usain Udabo. This, are, this is the winner and the first runner. Mm -hmm. Adam is a Mandinka. Mm -hmm. Like Usain. Yes. Usain is a Mandinka. Yes. What else? What tribe are they talking about? So you it know, doesn't they, exist? No. They are trying to put something in the minds of the people, yeah. psychologically, to tell them that, no, Usenu is more Maninka than Adama. That's an insult to the Maninka tribe. And we will not accept that insult from nobody. People should not insult us and we accept that. We know our tradition, we know our culture, we know our norms and values. Like today, if I go to any tribe, I marry, for example, if I marry a fuller or I marry a wolf or yes. I marry an agu, yes. you understand, yes. my sons and daughters will call themselves as Mandinka, a proud one. Right. So people are trying to play a mind game here, telling people that, not even a mind game, this is deliberate. Because I had the deputy party leader of UDP, Ajiam Sek, yes. saying that uh, vote for Usain Dabo, you understand, Usain is the same tribe with you, and you people are the uh, largest tribe in this country. Yeah. That's why I told you that a yeah. politician who did not have any political agenda to sell, the only thing they will back bounce to is tribe or religion. That's it. But there is no tribal that, that, play that in this. No, 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 I don't no believe tribe. nobody can put that into my mind. Because if you look at it, even with the eight MPs, who among us is not a man nigger? Maybe Baba Gale and Billy. You understand? The so rest are all man The rest are all man -nigger. So if it is a tribal line, we will also say, let's go to our tribe. But we don't believe in that notion. And we should not try to inculcate this concept in the minds of the young and those who are coming into politics. It's a, just a nonsense game. People are seeing what is going on in this country, the infrastructure development, freedom of speech, media. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk of a lot of things. People are free. And this is the freedom that we are looking for. And that is why they vote for this man. I know UDP is very much hated in this country. Why do you think that is? Because there is also this claim that that, 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 that was a protest vote. You have people who have their candidates, right? Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily uh, want the president. But they have their candidates, maybe say Esa Fal or Halifa Salah or uh, someone else. But when they go to the polling center or the voting center, they voted for the president. That way they can deny UDP from, from winning. No, no. Um, if if people are going to hate UDP, it will be on two things. Yes. You understand? Yes. One is they are very hostile when it comes to politics. Because they are, they are the only party that have uh, uh, platforms or groups, WhatsApp groups, that is insulting people. They right. will put your number there in their Sansandim Bolomba, Kani Wuleng, I don't know, name them. Right. You understand? Insulting you, insulting you, insulting. Would that make them to have your vote? The question is no. They will not have your vote. Right. You understand? Right. They are the only political party during the um, registration process. They have their black blacks going to polling stations and pointing figures at people. Tell him, tell him you are not a Gambian. Yes. You understand? Yes. You cannot have a voter's card. Let the foreigners stay from our politics. This and that. It's not good. I believe these are the things that disturbs them much, very well. And they thought that they are gaining. But they learned their lesson. <laughs> when, you say, when you say they learn their lesson, what do you mean by that? Of course, they learn their lesson because the masses, the citizens has already shown to them that we say no to UDP anymore. And I told you here one time... Do you, do um, you think the party will die after this? <laughs> you are talking about that. The party is already dead. Is that? It's dead. There I, is no yes, chance of them resurrecting. There is no chance. Even us at NPP, I do say this to our people, frankly, that look... This is a do or die game. If UDP won, know that NPP is dead. If NPP won, know that UDP is dead. Right. Until and unless they change the name of the party and revive the party. Right. <laughs> Without that, UDP is dead. I'm telling you, they already did. So now, I know the parliamentary elections are coming. You are the Honorable MP of Lower Body, and I'm sure you will be running, you are seeking re-election under the NPP ticket, of course. But then, uh, in terms of uh, the parliamentary election, UDP have the majority when it comes to the National Assembly. Uh, 
before. What do you see? <laughs> no, but they, they, they're still there, right? They, they're still no, there. No, they are not the majority. Yeah. Well, it's, before... Let me tell before, you, this is called you, majority minority. Majority minority. Yes. But when you look at... Uh, at the initial stage, mm -hmm. they are the majority. You understand? Yes. But, uh, like, Lamja, one thing is that a parliamentarian has to be free. You know, you are representing people. When you go to the house, you have to speak your mind. And you have to speak the minds, the minds of your people. Yes. You understand? Yes. But if you want to control a parliamentarian, this is what you're supposed to say. You should not say this, this and that. You want to direct them, leave them right. to be liberal. Right, right. You understand? Right. You know, it will come to a point that they will be stuck. They right. will not know exactly what to do. Right, right. You understand? Mm -hmm. So this is why we have age over them. What the Mandingas will used to say, Kunkun Nasya. Mm -hmm. There are many, but what can they do? Because even if I have something to say in mind, yes. but I don't have the liberty to say that I will keep quiet. This is what disturbs them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I am telling How, what, you. But what are you reading in terms of, do you think, they, they, I mean, you see, do you see a majority NPP parliament? Yes. That one is, is clear. The statistics are there. It's very clear. So now the, the president uh, will be sworn in next month, and, and I know there is a lot of um, expectation, a lot of excitement. The mm -hmm. president really has been endorsed by a massive over 400,000 citizens. Mm -hmm. That is very huge. Mm -hmm. In terms of the way forward, because the country needs to get to the le next level, level and yeah. the president has been taxed mm -hmm. to do that, mm -hmm. what would you like to see? take place i mean people are complaining people say that the the, the standard of living in the country is going down high yeah, cost the, of living yeah and all that, that. yeah this is a very important area and it's a very valuable point you know um there are certain key areas that if we will sit with the president and we will tell him that we want these sectors to move and they must move yes. by and forth some they of these sectors yes sectors like agriculture trade you understand? Mm -hmm. um, uh, agriculture, trade, tourism, mm -hmm. um, um, education. Fisheries, you understand? Education, yes. So these sectors has to move by and force. Mm -hmm. If the citizens are not well educated, that country will be a dominant country. You understand? Right. If citizens are not willing to work for their country, even it comes in terms of agriculture, we will never have uh, enough food to cater for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You understand? And also, trade is very important. Look at, go to our ports today. You will have your container there. It will be there for one month plus. You will not get your container. What is that? Are we moving? Now, what people are doing is they will go to China. They will, they, when they went to China or um, um, Turkey, they will ship their containers to uh, Dakar, Dakar, Senegal. They from Senegal, they will take their vehicles from Senegal and come into the country. You understand? That system has to stop. And we will stop it immediately. I'm telling you this. And we have to expand the port and business has to flow. Whether they like it or not, we have to move. And this country will move. Nobody will make us to be stagnant in one place. The president has promised to um, deliver justice to the victims, but also a new constitution yeah. with a term limit. Mm -hmm. With term limit. <coughs> yes, uh, for the new constitution, I don't want to talk about it, but for the victims, I believe justice has to be done. And... I am telling you, if I am voted again into the parliament, for the issue of the victim, I'm going to spare her that. Justice has to be. For the victim? Of course. Justice has to be. There's no doubt. There's no, there's no, no go area. Yeah. The, the, the justice has to be done. There's no go area. Because we have all seen what has happened here. You understand? So at least the victim also, someone should be there to wipe their tears. And we must do that. That one is enough. And, and also, what, what kind of team would you want the president to have around him? Anyway, for me, personally, I would like the president to have a very radical cabinet. When I say radical cabinet, what I mean is cabinet uh, that uh, the youth will be represented, cabinet that women should be represented, and cabinet that everybody will be represented. And it is going to be a cabinet of an intellectual. Intellectual cabinet. Yes. That's because I, 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 what I'm foreseeing is that, you know, because the type of parliament that I want the president to have, you know, we should have a well-informed uh, uh, parliament. 
You understand? So, we, and I know that we're going to have a well informed parliament. So, if any of the cabinet members is not well landed, you have a problem. You have, the, pre, the president himself will sack you out because you will disgrace yourself there. That one is a no good. When you come to parliament. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable, thank you very much for coming. Thank I you. I appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank so you. Much. My thank apologies you. for keeping you waiting. Thank <laughs> no you. problem. Thank, okay. you. thank you very much. Thank you so, so much. So that was the MP, uh, Honorable MP uh, Al Haji Jawara. He was my guest uh, on the show today. Thank you for being there. I will be back tomorrow. Until then, goodbye from me. <laughs>